everyone. Welcome to the Writers Roundtable. Um, it's a event where we have about um, a group of writers. Today we have five writers, six pieces, and we've all already read them all. We're going to go through them piece by piece and just discuss some um, thoughts that we have on them, how to improve the pieces, what really works well, what maybe needs to be improved upon, and, and we do it, and you know, it's all about support. Bonelli Media is super, super, um, we're, we're very supportive of artists supporting other artists because, you know, there's room for us all to be awesome. And so that should be the goal. Um, okay, so just a quick intro. We have four authors that are here. One author is not here. I'm using author as an all-encompassing term, even though some of us are screenwriters, playwright, playwrights and such. But we have one author that is in a different time zone, so it's very difficult for her to be here. But other than that, um, we have Darren, who is who submitted an excerpt from his novel. We have Liz, who submitted two screenplays. One is, um, I mean, we'll talk about them, but she submitted two screenplays. We have Galen, who submitted um, the beginning of a screenplay. And then we have me, who I submitted a novel, the first two chapters of my novel. Okay. So without further ado, um, I figured we would start with uh, Choices. This is the piece for the author who is not here. Um, Ngama RV is her pen name. So I just like to start by throwing these up on, what do they call it? Throwing these up on share screen. So is that all right with everybody? Yeah. Awesome. Do, 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 do. So I just wrote my notes. And so what I do is I kind of just go through the notes that I wrote. And then the last time we did it, I'm writing, I wrote my notes and we go through it like through the whole piece. And if you have a note anywhere in here, or if there's something that sticks out to you, just tell me to stop scrolling. Everybody can see this, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. So I really like the prologue because I think it immediately, like you get what kind of vibe it's gonna be. You understand that it's about this whole idea of the suffering woman, which it's, it's political and poetic at the same time, I felt. Um, I just really feel like it communicated what I was about to read, especially the way it then launches after this vlog into this part here about her husband, you know, kind of choking her. I'm sorry, I'm not in the prologue. Yes, this part. I'm sorry. This is what I was talking about. The um, the like note for that the author has about everything and every girl child suffering. Child is beautiful. That thing. I really liked it a lot. I think it definitely set us up for what we're going to get in the prologue, which is this attack on her womanhood or on her physical being. It was never explained, so I'm sure it's going to be explained later in the script um, why she was being attacked. At first, I thought she was giving birth. Side note, just stop me if, if, if y'all want to say something. But at first, I thought she was giving birth. The way these words were, you know, um, my head is exploded. I can't take it anymore. God, the pain, especially given what we had just discussed or read. But then I realized she was being attacked. So I really wanted answers to this. And I think that's a good thing because we don't get the answers right away. We go straight from this into this five years later almost straight into the five years later, which is one of the things that stuck out for me. Um, cause I felt as though there's a lot going on just in mm -hmm. the introduction of this piece because you do have um, a dedication and then a disclaimer and then the author's note and then the prologue and then there's a short romantic scene and then we get five years later. Mm -hmm. So for me, I felt like there were a bit too many like stepping stones for me to get to before I got into it. Um, mm -hmm. And I almost wonder um, in that scene in between, between the attack and the five years later, I'm not exactly sure of the, um, the time and place of that moment. It seems more like, um, rather than like a, a scene, it felt more like a recollection of feelings and emotions a little generalized. You mean yeah. the, this part, the prologue felt like that? Um, not the prologue, but the chunk right before the five years later. Sorry, I can't see the share oh. screen anymore. I did something weird. You can't? It might be me. I'm no, it's not you. It's me. Okay. <laughs> it's not you. Um, <laughs> but there's, uh, 
there's like a short um, kind of half page chunk before we get to the five years later that is after the attack. Right here, yes. I, I stopped yeah. at the five years. That's why I was confused. Yeah, yes, you're right absolutely there. right. I wish yeah. there was some way that we could root that in a time and place um, because it makes me feel like that's the moment we're going to jump back to when we yes. come from five mm -hmm. later. And I feel like it could be more compelling to jump right back to the attack because that is really yeah. provocative. So that you're was saying this. Or you're saying this part right here that we're looking at, and then from here back to the attack? Kind of. I need to redo my screen so I can see what you're... I would almost, I would actually say that that small portion might not be needed, truthfully. Necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel I like the attack itself is so, it's so visceral and emotional and, and power, and like, it's, it's, you know exactly what this person is going through. But then to kind of have that and then jump to five years, it feels almost like an apology in a way, or like a transitional type thing, but you don't need that transition because it 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 takes away from the momentum of what you've already set yes, up. Yes, I agree. I think there's romance. But but I think there's something beautiful about like there's this kind of moving train, right? And then we stop mm -hmm. the train, but we stop the train on the complete opposite end of it. Like we're seeing her husband choke her to death. Or choke her and now we're about to see how they met and it's totally different you know so then yeah. we're gonna the whole time we're asking well where did it go wrong and that's so compelling for the reader so i agree i actually wrote that there was a lot in the beginning and that um the time jumps were a bit disorienting um especially because i think it's super poetic with the author's note then we get into this it, all these images of these actions physical actions and then we go into this love story i agree i don't think they need this part right here yeah. Um, and, I mean, I don't know what the purpose of the disclaimer serves personally to the author, um, because that might be something that's really important to them to set up um, based on their readership or, you know, whatever their priorities are with that. But for me, I felt like it was unnecessary. Um, and I almost wanted to get to it more just as like being given the, the manuscript and going from page one to when we were like in the story, I feel like you could shorten that link. Mm. I agree. I agree. Okay. Um, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I was generally yes. confused by this. I liked the writing, but I, I thought there were different pieces, actually. And, and I was generally confused by what I was supposed to be reading actually um but it does seem like a scriptoria i wrote the scriptoria of human resilience it's kind of how it struck me and just pieces of like snippets of of time that she was capturing but they don't to your point really all thread together it's kind of disjointed mm. i agree i think there just needs to be a, um, a little bit of unity in yeah, transition. She's ahead. very, very descriptive. She obviously has a good handle on language and and flow, building the the moment. And um, you know, she has a strong narrative, but it's the transitions are are clunky. Mm -hmm. I can I can see. So the, a way to so how would we improve the transitions? Because we I think we all agree about the disjointedness. How would, what would be suggestions for her to improve and make it more seamless? Well, so that's what raised the question for me. Is she going for, is this supposed to be a novella? Um, or is right. this like a, a short chat book of, of like a memoir kind of thing? Mm. Right, what are we getting into? Basically? Right, right, because that matters. That, that will set the guardrails for how she crafts the story. You know, um, because if it is just a short sort of, you know, memoir, um, then yeah, each of these would be standalone pieces and then it's a matter of organizing it for a finished product. But if it's truly a novella, then she, I think she needs to really think, go back and think about the transitions and probably add some more content to flush out some of the gaps that are, that are there. That's one of the things that I was feeling in the writing itself was that um, there, there, if it is in that sense, like a narrative, I feel right. like room to play with the language. It's really yeah. 
accurately mm -hmm. written right now, almost like a retelling, um, mm -hmm. like a memoir, like you said. But if it is more prose and playful, which she sets it up as a fiction, um, I feel like there's a lot more space to, to it, fill that out. It feels like it's been over edited. Yeah, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and his, you so whoever she's over? working with maybe weren't clear about a vision of what this finished product would be or look like, but it feels like it's just been over edited and, 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 you know, pared down too much, yeah. which is where I get confused about the intent. Is this a novella where, you know, it's more storytelling? No, it doesn't really fit there. And so it's a little confusing. Okay. Um, I think, one thing that's sticking out to me about what you're saying is um, just to clarify, it's about a choice and letting the audience know pretty early on what journey they're going to take. Because really, when you're picking up a book right. to read it, you're going to grab your audience in the first few pages. And if you don't, then you're not going to have them. Like, so what you need to and do sometimes is that first paragraph. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I think she has us for the first for the, the first bit of it. But then you don't want to lose us right here with making us not understand what this piece is going to be. Right. Um, Galen, I think I heard you trying to say something. No. No, okay. <laughs> Look, I, I was just making sure. All right. Um, so I had a note about just some little technical things about the tenses changing. Uh, for instance, I was at the birthday party right here, but then he's handsome right here. So just be careful about things like that. Just and those are small nitpicky technical things, but especially if this is a retelling and recalling from five years earlier, you want to keep it. I get that it's we're we're in the when we get it's, but it's still in the past. So yeah, then, there's also to be nitpicky. There's also a, a couple of comma splices. You you see one on the screen? Um, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I should have had that ready to go. Um, uh, show me a page. I can find it. I didn't take too many grammar notes because I did notice that she has an editor team. And so I was. That's a really good point. Yeah. Touche. Yes. So great. I, I ignored grammar. I, I didn't even bother. I, I just read it straight as a reader and looking at continuity and, you know, writing mm -hmm. style. I didn't worry about grammar either. But I did notice some of like, what you're pointing out. Yeah. Cool. There, were, there was almost um, every once in a while, um, almost like a, a, a contradiction of mm. um, different moments. Like there was a moment where she says, um, same old videos, same old quotes. And then, and every quote felt like it was updated for me. Um, and so like in moments like that, I felt like there might be um, some, some contradictory ideas going where, you know, is Facebook full of really tired content that's not stimulating her right now? Or is every post kind of speaking Sorry, to her specifically in that moment? And that's just one example that I pulled, but there were a couple tiny moments like that where I couldn't tell if the protagonist was meant to be enjoying something or not enjoying mm. something. Or if they- so a stronger point of view. Yeah, it, how they felt about things, like again, making choices mm. within there. Can you okay. scroll up a little bit, please? This way? Begin. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, go up. Go up more. Maybe it's in the prologue. Go down. It's next page, please. Here. So this was kind of weird to me. I don't know what the proper terminology is, uh, but I get stuck on this. Which part? Uh, go by paragraph. I struggle. I can't breathe. I can barely breathe. I tried to kick him. I'm able to remove. I seize. I run. I can't. Everything. Everything. Yeah. And that bugs me. <laughs> really bad. I actually, it's, it's interesting because I actually thought that this was intentional for the prologue because she wanted it to feel me, like, me, me. like. Right. Desperate. And that was part of what threw me off though, because that technique I could see being done in like, a book of prose and memoirs, you know, or whatever, you know, but I was confused by it. I think maybe it's just style preference. 
I think that, I think the only reason I say that I think it's the style preference thing is because I feel like if there's anywhere in your book that you can just run away with the style, it's definitely your prologue and your epilogue. So um, I think that's what, and I thought that too until I got here. <laughs> and then I'm like, because she doesn't do that here at all. I was like, so clearly that was a stylistic choice for the right. poem, I thought, I thought so. It, it um, created a real contrast that left me trying to figure it out. And I did, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so other than that, I mean, I think, I think we got a good, for me personally, um, unless somebody else has some things I want to point out, I just kind of want to give like an overall, what I personally thought and everybody can kind of do that too. I personally thought the story um, has a lot of, it definitely intrigued me what was going on. I really liked the um, interaction between her and the guy at the party because it, it made me question that sometimes like, you know, why she was letting this guy take up so much of her space. So I wish she hadn't made us, made me as a reader feel the, cause I'm assuming it was because of tension. She was attracted to him. I wish I felt that more and knew what he looked like and, and why she was so into him other than that he smelled really good. But other than that, I, I think that the relationship between them is definitely intriguing. Um, I definitely want to see where it goes wrong. So I'm interested. I'm drawn in. I think you have a, a great narrative here. Your language sometimes is very poetic, and I enjoy stuff like that. Because um, I think sometimes when you do poetic things without making me personally feel like, oh, this is too wordy and over um, overcomplicated, it makes me feel the energy of a piece, if that makes any sense. Does anyone else want to say anything? No. I I would read more of it, hands down. Yeah. And yeah. I want it's it's almost like she set up this really um, bold mystery as to how do we get from point A to point B, and I want to know. <laughs> so kudos and congrats on that. Yeah, I like her narrative a lot. She's, she's a good writer. Awesome. All righty. Yeah. That was Choices by Ngama RV, which is actually a published work. If anyone wants to go out and buy that, I think it's available on Kindle. So um, I know it's available on Kindle. I believe it's also available on uh, what's it? Amazon. All right. So next we're going to go to Fallen. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of her writing, actually. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, my God. This is really good. <laughs> I, mean, I think I, I had I, I had to really stretch to try to come up with that critic crit, uh, constructive feedback because <laughs> everything I wrote was like this is amazing and beautiful and you know, whatever. But, Speaking yeah. of, we're about to get into the Fallen is your piece, right, Darren? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I said yes. so much. I, I I I had previously submitted and we had gone through I think the first three chapters and so I felt obligated to include that with the additional so I, I didn't mean to send so much. It's okay I mean it actually was easy to read so it didn't feel like nice. it didn't the others were yeah it didn't feel like much no it didn't. Okay great so that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah so the last time we did a writer's uh, workshop uh, Darren submitted this the the first the prologue and the first chapter of this book so and then we went through the rest today so we're going to talk about about that sure. um i personally i always like to go first i don't know why because I'm I'm, right. I'm 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 a bully. <laughs> i personally like the especially when you read the the prologue which the prologue is so like once you read the prologue here it's so jilting like it, i just feel like what is this metal world of, of grunge that I'm about to get into? And, and, I'm definitely, and I definitely think your prologue doesn't disappoint because I would hate to get a world set up like that and then the world not feel like that, but everything you describe is very much like and very much what I would expect after reading your prologue. Um, I think that you use your language. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna find the exact, I wrote a note and I'm gonna find it because I'm gonna say it the way I wrote it because it it's gonna be more eloquent than what I'm saying right now. Um, <laughs> it is. I love the story. Really? You sure? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just, I just, I think what, where I wrote was great. I wrote a lot of nitpicky stuff, and I know at one point I said I'm writing a lot of nitpicky stuff because I know that you're. I think you're a really good writer. I think you, you yeah. use words very well. I think you set up imagery so freaking well. 
my one of my favorite lines is um not my favorite line but there's a moment in there where you talk about ruby and i really like that you talk about ruby without ever saying she's at, at that point she you didn't say she was a robot yet so i feel i love when an author trusts that their audience is smart enough to pick up on things like that without being told just by certain other descriptors that you put in there of course i'm not gonna be able to find them now that i want to um but it was somewhere in no, somewhere in here. Things like this. Drew, Ruby was dry, matter of fact. Um, just not wait for him to respond. Um, he would think she was real if not for her complete absence of emotion. So when I saw that, Ruby's too lifelike. I was like, oh, she's a robot. You know what I'm saying? Without ever being told she's a robot. You know, <laughs> I love when an author does that because it lets me know that you're not going to spend a lot of time. You're only going to explain stuff that needs to be explained. So I really like that. Um, but, 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 but. Feel free to hop in if anyone say, say anything. <laughs> I like yeah, the descriptions. I, like what you're saying. The, the vivid descriptions and stuff. Like brings everything to mind. I like that. Um, I also I like your style of writing a lot. Um, or sorry, I didn't mean to, Gudere, if you weren't going to go, go ahead, but okay. Um, no, I, cause generally this, this, uh, genre of, of storytelling is not my favorite, but I really enjoyed your story and that's saying a lot. <laughs> um, if I had to be nitpicky, I, I would say that the different author's notes that you have throughout, I wonder if there's a way to incorporate that in your story without directly putting in author's notes because it, it rips me out. So, sorry. Mm. That's the intent, totally. Gotcha. Yeah. Are those That's the goal. Like, are those the italicized bits? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says yeah, author's notes. So I, I'm, that's sort of a, an issue that I have to deal with. <laughs> no, I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, so that's, that's one nitpicky note I had. And then also, I think you do a really good job of setting up your characters. I would love to know more about the details of the world earlier. Okay. Um, because I kept finding myself reading and then stopping and then looking back and being like, okay, I don't quite understand this, but let me see if I missed something. And then I would go forward and then stop and look back. So if there's a way to just kind of build that a little bit more and establish it more so in the beginning, that would help people like me that don't normally read this type of genre. You mean yeah. weird people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hopping into that because like, to me like the science fiction genre this totally to me reads like science fiction noir like yeah. a Blade runner um and i love that kind of genre so i was like i was sold from go and a word that a lot of other people have already used that i agree with is vivid your writing is really vivid it's really compelling it's really artistic um uh, to hop on to something liz said i would also like some more maybe context at the top just to make sure that I, I also know like what I'm in for. Um, and a little bit about, I mean, like, I love the way that you've got that transition of like Jack going from this um, vision and this experience back into this session with this therapist. Um, but there were times where I wasn't even sure I knew who Jack was at the mm -hmm. onset. Um, and so maybe establishing him a little more firmly just for new readers um, hopping into, um, this as a series. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there's a really cool opportunity here for some fun juxtaposition because you do have all these nods to futuristic moments, but we don't have a full picture of the world. Um, and I think that maybe playing with things like the visuals of like a ballpoint pen or like a coffee mm -hmm. cup or some of the kind of like the modern meets the traditional in there, because I feel like you have that. Um, uh, kind of tug going on with the language. Um, and then lastly, the other thing that I honed in on that I feel like um, is a really cool opportunity is to really play with that dialogue because your prose writing is phenomenal and you've got such a specific artistic thumbprint. Um, I feel like your dialogue is not necessarily as organic and natural as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that I would just maybe hands down, just read it out loud 
and make sure that the voice of how you're writing it is the voice of who you imagine yourself in the room with in that moment. Things like people rarely don't use contractions. You know, it's rare that someone will say I will as opposed to I'll. Um, moments like that. And the only way to really know if, if those words are sitting in like an organic place is to hear it. Right. Thank you. This is a beautiful piece though. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah. I wanted to say that I agree with everything they're saying. I also agree with the author's note thing. That's one of the notes that I had. Um, suggestions, dialogue is a great, for me, understanding, because I, when, it, when it comes to dialogue, I always approach it as an actor first. When, when the tension is so high and compelling that these things just fall out of the, the conversation or the conflict, that's sometimes the easiest way, you know? Little things like, you know we can't go there anymore um, because the, the 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 Russian whatever war is that you know things like that um, they just fall out of the the conversation and that they don't feel to us like the author's trying to let us know something that we have to know here so um, I would say that that's just a suggestion of how to do it dialogue is great um, or just spread it out so take all the information in that chunk of of author's note and then put a bit of it at the beginning a bit of it just sprinkle it throughout and then that's another way to it doesn't feel so much intentionally, ex it doesn't feel so intentionally expository. Um, when you said, uh, the, the, right, um, I really like that, I like your world that you're describing, but I realize that you don't describe your characters physically. I have no idea what they look like. I don't know if they're black, white, short, tall. I know the, I know the guy who, and I, I, and the reason this popped into my head when she was having the affair, I was like, side note, I love those uh, screen names that you came oh, up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when, but when you had that, when you had that moment between them, I was like, I wanted to feel as attracted to them as they were to each other. You definitely built the tension in that moment. I definitely felt the attraction. It was very well written, but I had no clue how to visualize them as individuals. Um, what were they wearing, especially in the scene where there's so much sexual tension, what were they wearing, which by the way, you did the sexual tension without ever making it overt. I, I feel like that's perfect the way you have it. But what I'm saying is just more like- I didn't want to be crude. No, I'm not talking about their body. Yeah. Well, I am talking about their, I'm just saying like, when you read a book, you, know, you have this idea of who this person is, but this person's gonna be anybody at this point, I feel like just give us a description at some point, like, you know, she tucks her long auburn hair behind her ear, those kind of things. And they can notice each other the way that we as people notice things about each other in that sense. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be super, um, like she walked into the room and here's a list of adjectives about her, but it can right. just be <laughs> like where his, yeah, where his focus is going and the experience. And then we get to kind of live in that experience with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that way it feels new to us too. So it puts us like in the room. Um, in that one chapter, is it that Jack is in his cell and then he has a memory and then he's back in his cell? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I got that, but it, it took me out of the moment to get it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. So if there was a way that it was obvious that that was what was happening, because usually people do that with like a font change, italics or something. Um, if you don't want to use italics, that's fine too. You could just make it clearer that that's what was happening, because I don't think I got that until he was back into the cell. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's been uh, my focus lately is trying to work on I mean, it's basically slipping into alternate dimensions mm. and, and so that's cool i like that while, that's cool. while he's in the confine of of this room kind of going through this whole analysis um he's he's skipping into other dimensions and it's, and it's causing ripples in the reality of of what's happening and so the idea is to kind of get into the world and some of the characters through that alt state, but then bring, continue to bring him back into the um, part of the, well, where he's clinically going through this, this whole cleansing trip. 
So, cause he's got a lot of issues, but he's also um, like a superhero. <laughs> so I have to flush that out a little bit. I feel like, I feel like that gives you such a, a cool convention that you can build based on like, what is that experience like for him? Cause you play with visuals so well, as far as like light and sensation um, that that might be the perfect opportunity for that is what is it like for him physically to be dipping in and out of these realities? Um, and could you use that as like a, a little kind of breadcrumb for the reader um, where we start to realize, oh, these are these little blink in and outs because he's right. going through this specific sensation. Um, I also took a quick note just from a promotional standpoint. Um, I, I actually, I love the like kind of um, planetary um, artwork at the uh, page numbers. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's just a nice little like reminder that we're in this kind of unconventional genre. Um, I also think that uh, including a really compelling image on your title page would be something that might serve you really well. Um, just as far as like almost like concept art um, to, to help us kind of as a shortcut uh, be where you are in that sense. Um, if you want to just look at different um, pieces of art, I think there was one that I even screenshot um, I might drop it into the group or something. Just like as a filler for now, because I, I obviously I, I'm. Um, I you need want to do some original artwork. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, but so, just in the sense of like almost for um, yeah, like a filler essentially. Um, okay. While you're showing it to people, um, let me see if this is how this works. Let's see, file. I have a lot, a lot of art, so I, I could oh, sweet. do something. Um, that's just something that I feel like could be really helpful. Um, okay, that's, that's kind of exciting. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I do kind of try to, if you like, right in this section, I try to get into describing the world and the city around him, his neighborhood, you know, the bar, the, you know, talk about Northtown flanked by two major rivers and, um, you know, uh, barely make out the words pleasure parlor, red flashing lights. So I, kind of, I did try to lend some, some time to building up the world a little bit, what, what a city environment is and where he's at. I wonder, um, what do you mean by bringing the world or, or, um, Bringing that into the story sooner, Liz. You were, you were, you had some really good feedback about. Um, I think uh, I think what she was just to clarify. I think she was talking more about the situation that the world is in with this war stuff going on. Is that what you were talking yeah. about? Yeah. I think yeah, it was yeah. more of that. Like we want to know more about what's the what's what world are we in? Like because clearly the rules of this world. Like, right. That's what. Yeah. What's okay. what? Are, what's the rules of engagement for this character within it. Wow. Oh, define, okay. <laughs> You're like, it comes with a Bible. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that Bible is what readers who read this genre are gonna be in love with this for, because yeah. you're gonna have all these rules and stuff. And, and we wanna know like, even little stuff like, we know it's it's not like a, a, uh, a realistic piece because the guy, pushes the robot out of his brain you know what i mean so what are the rules of this how is he able to do that what is changing about the world and we know about this war that's happening and is it is it an alternate version of our world is it a future version of our world is it not earth at all um just so we can kind of like get our feet on the ground and i mean maybe we don't get our feet on the ground you know what i mean like maybe you do kind of build the world in um in nuggets as you go maybe that's part of what you want is for the reader to discover themselves with it um yeah that would just be that was the takeaway of reading like a short piece of it was wait a second where exactly am i and when am i well it's interesting because i have a version of this where that's what i did mm. and and went okay. and i actually edited i pulled it out and and it went into the third book 
because that's really where it belongs. But the, and then I came back, and I, I can probably bring stronger traces of it into the prologue here to set it up. Because two, if you scroll on the graphic element, so they're on for right now. It's just a working name, but I'm calling it the Kevlar. So the planet that we're on is Kepler, and then the Gaia, which I suppose you can see as Earth, is a mirrored system in an alternate dimension. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, cool. it's a dual. Mirrored Gaia, I immediately went to Mother Earth, and so I was like, oh, right. we're in like so, a spiritual version of Earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a little bit of, the same thing. Uh, yeah. But um, anyways, and so all of that kind of comes out, and and certainly, um that well it becomes kind of a central point to the whole this whole first book but you know how star wars has that really long scroll before we get into each of their movies where they set up sure, what yeah. we're dealing with? Yeah. i feel like this almost needs one of those and yeah you're right the prologue would be the perfect home for that yeah mm -hmm. because then the rest of the continuity of of the character building and everything can can kind of breathe yeah. Which is what I'm trying to accomplish, just let that breathe out a little bit and continue to build the hooks and the layers because it's it's not a simple story. <laughs> not at all. But um, I do wanna I do wanna make it a little more obvious that he's experiencing multiple realities at once in this chamber that he's in. Um, so I that's really good feedback. It got my mind kind of thinking. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's interesting because, like I said, I had done a, I had set it up initially kind of like that, and but I felt like I was giving away too much, and so I pulled a lot of it back. But because you're right, like how Duryea mentioned earlier, like you know, audiences enjoy being able to kind of um, unfold these stories ourselves and and not feel like we're being kind of like spoon fed the information. <laughs> yeah. um, but at the same time, we, we don't want to feel like we're working too hard for it or we're missing things or having to go back and try to piece it together. It's a dance. <laughs> I, I, that, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I love that, that that's the feedback that's coming out of this exercise. So that's, that's cool. So, um, I think other than that, I, I loved it like I do. I Like everyone said, I think it's poetic, interesting, strong, dynamic characters. I really, just one more note, I really loved the introduction after reading it the first time and now seeing more of the story, the introduction of his wife as a character totally adds this really um, humane aspect to the whole story. And I really love it. Cause now, cause he's just a regular guy too, instead of this anomaly, you know? Right. I really love that device. Yeah, I mean, he, he chose to take on a human experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> I mean, so that's, that's all I have. Does anyone else have anything they want to add before we move to the next right. piece? Keep going. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so next we're going to do Lucid, which is one of Liz Shad's pieces. Let me just pull it up here. There we go. Okay. So um, for me, I think my, my first question is a technical one. It's a question. What yes. is, when you use super at the top of a scene like this, what does that mean? <laughs> it's like, a, uh, like a little, words in the center of the screen over black. Right. Yeah, that wasn't a critique. That was literally like, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then one more question. Okay. So when you're using establishing, because I know we've talked about this before, how we're not supposed to use this in the slug line. You're a hundred percent correct, and that should not be there. <laughs> okay, okay. I yeah. was I was wondering if it meant that we just can't use it in the slug line, but we can use it here. So no, what would you use all. instead of this? What would you do instead of that? A calm inner city neighborhood at night. So that would be gone. This right here. Can y'all yeah. see it? When I highlight, can y'all see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So just okay, great. Yeah, Perfect. I forgot to take that out. That's on me. <laughs> I personally loved your script. I didn't have a lot of notes on it um, that were technical, clearly. Um, I had like really nitpicky stuff too, just because I know you wanted some feedback. So I, um, 
for me, um, I love I love where it's at, of course, hometown. But I didn't get a I, I don't. Is this a film? I mean, I'm sorry. Is this a short film? The be, a first scene of a movie or? It's the first ten pages of a feature. Okay, and that's what I wrote. Like, so when you read the notes I'm going to send you, some of them are like, if this is a short, this if this is not a short, because I assumed it wasn't a short because of the mm -hmm. way it ended. Um, it still is a story, which is really great. Just in what you gave us is a full story, but the ending left. If it wasn't a short, I was like, oh, uh, you know. But yeah. knowing that, knowing that it is the beginning to it, I love that you set up all of these high stakes circumstances for them from the get go. You know what I'm saying? We we get we get that there's danger just from our setting, right? Then mm -hmm. then we get that emotion of the 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 gunshots, and then we have a action, right? Mm -hmm. As that action's happening you get a sense that of this heightened importance. Now, I'm not sure if that came from you telling me that they were sisters or me mm. being to realize that they were sisters. And I don't know, because to me, the only time it was mentioned that they were sisters is in one line of your action. So I wonder if that, I'm assuming that that's gonna be a big part of the story at some point mm -hmm. as to why you made them sisters and not like best friends or something. Um, and I'm definitely super interested to see where that's gonna go. I think structurally, you're, it's very sound. It moves, it's got a pace to it. You don't like, you don't, you don't bullshit and give us stuff we don't need. Um, <laughs> I, I love that about it. I think, boop, boop, boop. I would love a description of Tanya and Carla. Mm -hmm. um, because I just, specifically, I was wondering if they were black the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna lie. They go into that gag later on with the misidentification. I was yeah. like, where are we in that? I originally had the most, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. As, as mixed. Mixed meaning like half black, half white? multi yes. Yeah. Okay, why? Why? Yeah. Because it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's based on two <laughs> people that I know. Stupid version. Why okay. not? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, no, 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 because it does make a difference, though. Yeah, no, no, no. I do understand. Yeah, it does. It make does it. make a difference because mm -hmm. because socially, mm -hmm. two mixed girls versus two like dark skinned black girls are going to have mm -hmm. two completely different experiences growing up, 100%. and they're also going to they're going to respond to that news um, of them miss like the whole idea that the news has categorized them as two six two black men. It's mm -hmm. going to be if they're dark skin like girls or not, that's going to play a factor into that too. Um, mm -hmm. But at least you know why. And my question is this, is this something that matters for the rest of the story? Could this story happen if these girls were not black? Um, there are, there are tones of Atlanta, the way that Atlanta handles certain things that I want to bring in later. Um, and, to be and, somewhat like racially charged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm not a po like. I'm trying. Let me. Sorry, I'm just trying to think of well, what I'm, I'm trying, just, to trying to. Think. So it sounds like you have two actresses in mind for these roles. Yes. And I don't think there's anything wrong if you already know who you want to be in front of the camera, describing those characters like those actresses, because okay. also from like a. Um, production standpoint I mean that then sets you up for success to promote those actresses for those parts because then yeah. you've like introduced them visually to the people who are reading the script as like oh well these actresses fit this description you know what I mean mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything wrong with that and I know that uh it's kind of um a personal choice sometimes whether you include specific descriptions of actors or not mm -hmm. uh, but my opinion of it is when I'm reading a script, the description that I read gets kind of stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. the other thing to keep in mind is that if you do not specify sometimes, um, mm -hmm. the reader will um, impose their own race on the characters. Mm -hmm. And so like that can be something that you want to kind of keep from happening if you have something specific that you want. That makes sense. I just yeah. wanna, I wanted to, because me and you had this conversation the other day, I think everything she's said is, is accurate. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a problem with the characters um, being these specific actresses, but I would, I, I would, I would suggest that if it is important to you, especially given everything that these are women of color, mm -hmm. that 
you put it in the script and also in the dialogue. So okay. it, it's inescapable. So you know what I'm saying? Because, and, and, and if you have people giving you pushback, if they give you pushback because you're not, um, that you, uh, because you're not a woman of color, it's easy, mm -hmm. you, you get a woman of color to, you know, talk to you and get, and get you and help you write it or, or whatever you need to do. But I do think it's important mm -hmm. that, like Lena said, if, if you don't tell us what these women are and what they look like, people mm -hmm. will impose whatever they want on it. And generally we know what that ends up being. So, gotcha. um, okay. So I have like really technical stuff. I want to know what, if they were sisters and how that's going to play out, but it seems like you already have a, um, a trajectory for that. Yes. So I don't really have that note anymore. Um, I want to know one note I did have, and it might be too early in the script. Yes. What? Trajectory? Mama gone somewhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, the, 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 see, now, she, now I'm all messed up on <laughs> sisters, angle, to characters. Oh, yes. I think that this might change as the story goes on. I don't mm -hmm. see a distinct character difference between the two sisters at this point. I don't get a vibe of them being distinctly different, but it's just the first part of it. If this was a short, then I would want a, a, a bigger contrast, but because it's not a short, I, I guess it doesn't really bother me as long as their personalities are strong. I was starting to get a sense of like caretaker risk. Toward the end of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Which is why I said if it's not a short, I told you half of these notes I wrote is because I wasn't sure what it was. So ignore half of what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I had one big um, note that I wanted to ask about because um, I felt like they gloss over the fact that they killed a man pretty mm. easily. Yes. That was my big takeaway. <laughs> I felt like that didn't have the impact unless they've done it before. Before, a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot. Like enough to be so desensitized to it that even when the story of it is breaking on the television, they're they not even scared have a layer about it. Mm -hmm. So that was my big thing was if if they are like that hardened and um and have been through that much or experienced or done that much to where this is just another day for them, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. But it didn't quite feel like that's what was going on. It kind of felt like this was um even for them, this was like an exceptional event. And mm -hmm. I guess I wanted to see the effect of it, but you might be saving some of that for later. And this might be like the inciting incident that starts to build that with them. So that was my mm -hmm. biggest takeaway from the piece. Do you think it could be the for drugs? That so I wanted their reaction to it to be completely wrong because it's, it, it ends up being what gets them in trouble later on, slash caught later on. Mm -hmm. And so you're right that it's it's completely the wrong reaction. But I wonder if, it, if it's too desensitized at this point. Um, to... I think it's okay for them to have, you know, an inappropriate reaction to what happened, mm -hmm. but it, it has to like come from some place like there has to be a reason that that is their response, you know, yep. whether it is the things that they've been through um, or the things that they've done. And I don't know if we have enough time at that beginning and that might be what you explore later. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I guess I just need maybe more information about those girls and why this is the way that they're reacting. You know what I mean? Like, the why, the why. For sure. Yeah, because is this the first time that they've killed someone? No. Gotcha. Okay. And if you don't want us to know that right off the bat, then mm -hmm. I think that this setup is fine. <laughs> I mean, that has to be the assumption, though. I, I agree with you. I didn't think of that because I think I assume that's why my whole thing was like, who are these girls? I kept I kept writing that like without being ridiculous. Like, are these girls there? Are they in a gang? We're in a gang. Do they run drugs or do they just use them? Um, because yeah. you know, they clearly are using them. So that makes me feel like they don't run them. But mm -hmm but it could be a lot of things. I guess I just assumed that they were so used to this life. Mm -hmm. I assumed a lot about the characters. They probably don't have a family other than each other. And, mm -hmm. and which is fine. I get what Lena's saying though, just as long as there's a, a, a good why and the mm -hmm. why is, is compelling, then I yeah. think, yeah, so. There's very cool. few people who would be able to just kind of have a normal evening after killing someone. Like that list is huh. really short. <laughs> and that includes like like most like 
criminal populations and, and people who like go through so much, even those people would have a hard time, you yeah. know, the night yeah, yeah, that yeah. killed someone. <laughs> yes. Good point. That's a very good point. Um, I had just, oh yes, I would, I would want to look at your dialogue differently just because okay. if these are hood girls for real, for real, I would want them to sound hood. Mm. And I know that you're, I get what you're doing and, and, and trying to be respectful and politically correct and not like assume how black girls talk. Yeah. And I appreciate that. That's where a collaborator would come in handy big time. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. It, to me, it, to me for a while, I thought these were two white girls who use drugs Mm -hmm. And that and that's why they were in the hood to get there to get gotcha. To get Interesting. Up. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so because their speech is it's very like correct. Very mm. correct. Like and mm -hmm. so if they're not and it doesn't even have like so for me like 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 Lena said, a good collaborator um would, would help with that. But I would look at that differently. But the but but it's still well written dialogue. <laughs> it's okay. still well written. The dialogue is great. I just it didn't sound like hood girls to me. Got it. Got it, got it. Matt, were you going to say something? Yeah, how did you know? Because <laughs> I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking what, what she's done with the dialogue, though. You could almost, you could flip it the other way because I like different things in movies where, you know, like you're not getting the reaction or uh, something happened exactly like how you expect. So, like, could you flip it like where they've had a fall from grace? Maybe they live in a sort of average shitty area. But maybe at one stage, their parents had a bit of money or something happened. And for a little bit, they went to a decent school, then got into drugs, fell into the gangs. And so they can speak really well. It's almost like where in some movies, I'll have like the, uh, the criminals speak better than the cops because they spent their time in jail reading books and, and things like that. That's an excellent point. That's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah, point. yeah. As long as there's a reason why. And I get what he's saying because honestly... Yeah. And these could still be, now, now I'm not saying that they, their dialogue needs to be changed because they're black, just because if, are they hood or not? Like if they're right, from yeah. the hood, totally different from if they're, you know, if they're black and they have fall from grace, this would make sense. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. Cool. That's really all I had. I think you had like a very well written short, I mean, sorry, scene. I think um, your storytelling is very clear. Um, high stakes. I love a good high stakes. Yeah, um, I like it. It, it moved well. Um, those are the only things I would say to look at um, who the girls are and then go in that direction. And you mentioned that this is the beginning of the feature, right? So this is, yeah. in your mind, like the first scenes? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Because it also works as like a sizzle. What's um, a sizzle? Ooh, good a point. Sizzle's like a, a sizzle is like a sample that you create um, to get people intrigued in the idea of a feature film. Like, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you film it. Sometimes, you know, in the COVID era, you probably don't. You probably just write it out. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. They kind of like maybe woo investors or collaborators or partners. So that way, as you go into the feature, you've kind of built a team. I think that this is really close to being like a super, like super sexy sizzle. <laughs> it's awesome. Because like, honestly, when I said the thing about the short, like, I think this could work as a short if the ending was just a little different. Exactly. Yeah. It would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's why I like mm. That's why I keep saying your storytelling is very great. Okay. Thank you. Unless Thanks, anyone else has another comment, we're going to move to dance floor. Dance. Galen. Galen. Oh, gotcha. Uh, the working title. It is not by any means the title. Um, I yeah. feel like it's the title. And he don't want. He just don't want to l live in that love. I'm sure, messing with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I mean, it to me, it works as a title, though. Yeah. Having read it, yeah, I think it works fine as a, a title. Speaking of title, um, I would love a title page to be sure that you have your name on it. Mm. Uh, yes, because that was this was the only one that in my notes I had writer unknown because I wasn't sure. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's and that's also like protect your work kind of stuff too, right? Um. Anyway, me as a black gay man, thoroughly enjoyed this because 
it seems so often that works like this that are being produced aren't being produced by us. And I also feel like we're an incredibly misunderstood group of men and our diversity. It was great to have that voice be heard and especially that it was entertaining and it sounded like stuff that I know and hear and see. So, but it also to me was something that people who aren't gay could, um, could connect with like the whole idea of just social dating so on being on the phone with tinder everybody can relate to tinder like the whole section where you went down and did the rules i was like that is this is this a movie or a tv series it's a movie i was like that is this movie that is this movie like how to be a gay dude in 20, 2020 you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i i love that i had a, i thought it was a, a great a great journey for me i'm i would totally watch the rest of this movie Sometimes movies that are about our culture, LGBTQ, are really depressing. Um, I feel like that about a lot of Black movies, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I love the fact that this was like, when Dance for Life, I love the main character in that he's just so free. Mm -hmm. Because that's a good image that we need to see. A Black dude who's not like a stereotype of drugs and robbery and all this other stuff, who's trying to tell his friend to quit smoking just so he can dance longer. That is like the theme of this freaking movie for me. You know what I mean? Black boy like, joy. Yes, I just I love the I love the concept and everything that you had in it. Um, of course, I have some notes somewhere in here, but my notes are super. My notes are nitpicky on everybody's stuff, just because I wanted us to walk away with something <laughs> constructive. But yeah. the fact that this nitpicky is why I'm so excited. You know, like because it wasn't like oh no. Um, I love your narrative voice straight from jump. Where were we? Uh. This line right here, um, blah, 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 like all this stuff here. Mm -hmm. To nobody but himself. That's this is the line I like right here. As he lip syncs and gets his everlasting twelve year old life, I love that voice from the beginning. Just as a reader, because if I was someone who picked up who picked up the script immediately, you know what you're going to get just in this little blurb right here. Yeah, even the prose has like such personality, which is really fun to read. However, having said that, there's a lot of places where you don't need, like, I think here is great. There's other places later where um, you're, I feel like you're robbing yourself of space for other things because you're over um, describing stuff that doesn't need to be described. Let me give you an example. Boop, 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 boop. Um, you didn't send me this one. Huh? I didn't get this one. Uh, you did it. One you sent me. Yeah, no, I, I don't have it. That's my fault. I'm sorry, Galen. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. I'm a horrible person. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Actually, no, you're not. It's, it's all good. That's probably a, a good time too. Sorry, guys, if I uh, jump out just because I uh, should grab some sleep. Yeah, he just he, he's in it's a different time zone too. Thank okay. you for being here. Thank you for stopping by. All right. Thanks, guys. It was awesome to uh, listen to. Appreciate it. I'll let you go. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. Bye. Right. Where is the thing? I had it written down. Let me find it, Galen. If somebody else wants to talk while I find that, feel free. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, oh. The one... Oh, you got it? Are you going to... No, keep going. Okay. <laughs> I have one super nitpicky note. Um, uh, the voiceover during the nightclub scene, I feel like a lot of that could be incorporated into behavior and action. So like he's saying, Wallace took me to the hottest, blackest, gayest nightclub in the city and maybe I was overwhelmed. Like, I feel like that's, it's some, like he could maybe walk in and there's a sea of people and then it, however you want to do it. Like, I think there's so many different ways that that could be a show don't tell moment. Yeah. Um, and Where I think that would you? just be kind of cool. Uh, on page six, right there. Okay, right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. You mean up, up here somewhere? No, the voiceover that's right there. Ah, ha, 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 right here. Yeah, like I think- Oh, you're saying of... to turn this into action? I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. I, I, like, I just missed what you said. I think if if the things, the, the lines that are specific that need to be said out loud, like um, about child I just about died and went to the eighth circle of heaven, like I think that should stay. But I think everything before that you can show in what's happening within the club. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I like this though, just a personal thing. I love when writers do that. Wow. 
<laughs> I'm co-writing a book and my, my co-author hates, hates this, but I love it because to me, <laughs> it's, it's just filled with so much subtext. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, it but, immediately um, makes you go into that pattern of speech and it gives you like a certain, like, I don't know, it changes yeah. your body language when you read something like that. Uh, kind of jumping onto what Liz said, I had a, I, I wanted to know what the rules of the voiceover were. And I think that that would be something that would be really good for you to kind of mm. set up. Like, mm -hmm. does, does the voiceover come in when it's something that they're looking back on from the future and they're kind of setting up like a reminiscing context? Is mm -hmm. it, um, you know, when you, they're Thank kind you. of saying what the mind is going through at that moment so we get more inside knowledge? And it can be multiple things, but I think that you should kind of, frame up what you want it to be so that way because it can be kind of tricky to figure out when to do voiceover yeah. and not to and go to straight to dialogue or straight to action so i think that that would be a good kind of a parameter to set yeah. up mm. i agree um this is the the thing i was trying to find like this for your action i think this is all you need right there mm, uh -huh. mm. you know yep. um this is great. I'm, this is what I struggle with the most, Galen, is doing this exact, exact thing because I know why you, you put this here because you really want to like put your reader in the midst of that moment. Yep. However, that's, that's more not, I'm learning, that's more for like novels and less for screenplays because screenplays, they kind of want you to just go. Right. So, am, am I right, Liz and Ni Lena? Yeah, and I have the yeah. same bad habit too where I, I over picture at times. Um, I think part of it is like to know, uh, is this a feature film? And within that, how many minutes you want it to be? So how many pages you need it to be? Um, mm -hmm. Because this stuff will eat up minutes. Yeah. You realize it's eating. Um, I also wanted to say there was, da, 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 there's some moments where I feel like the voiceover and the dialogue kind of cover the same territory. And mm -hmm. so you can get kind of like two times of the same moment. Um, so that's something that I would look at, make sure that you're looking for redundancies and really pick which one you want the most. Yeah. Um, and I also think that the voiceover gives gives this whole experience like a really sweet coming of age vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like 80s coming of age kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. love that tone for this story. Me I think too. that it suits really well um, mm. with these characters that you're kind of growing. I was curious what the time period was because like CD player made me think like late 90s, yes. but OMG made me think like 20, like something. 2005. So <laughs> I actually want to, I want to say something too right there. I had that, that thought too. And this is why, because these two boys seem so openly gay, mm -hmm. but they're, but they're listening to CDs. So I don't, I grew up listening to CDs and this wasn't, this wasn't cool growing up. So I feel like as much as it is, is like refreshing to see these kind of kids be that open where they're using slang, like, and you know, he's going, you know, he's using slang that is like ballroom slang, yeah. but this is his first time going to the club. Like when he says mother, mother Houston, I'm wondering like, I think actually be more interesting. Like where did he get that from? I'd be thinking it'd be more interesting to see him learn that versus him having already known that because it then makes me feel like well how is he so comfortable being this out yeah this this young so, in the 90s i guess i i guess i just have to like um i think uh um, the it's the very first like cd player is like young ricky so that's like when ricky is like 12 so like i'm thinking that's like you know mid to late 90s right and so then um he so like the whole high school thing that's maybe like early, early 2000s thousands oh, okay he grows still cd club. right still cd players but he wasn't he wasn't going to the club was he in the early 2000s yeah yeah i mean he started he, you know, he started young like he started you know wallace took him to get his first fake id at 16 and so he had been you know he's been sneaking into nightclubs ever since um but that does but no that 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 is definitely like um that's a valid point though of and like this is only one more thing i want to because i'm not i'm not gonna beat up i'm not gonna beat the the point into a dead horse but but then you have the grinder twist mm -hmm. and that definitely puts it 
past like 2010. Well, then we've time jumped again, right? So now we're- No, this is all just nope. him. He's still in high school during what we're reading, right? No, 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 no. There's a time jump in the club. So after they grow- Oh, okay. Like, you remember like when Simba was walking across the log and like grows up? <laughs> when he's like dancing with the different dudes. So you that have is him. to grow up in the club, right? Okay. Yeah, in my head, the way it works, like, you know, they sneak into the club, they get into the club, they're partying, they're partying, and then sort of like, you know, this sort of like this montage of like, you know, they're partying right, and they're right, 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 right. partying, and then like finally when Ricky slams into this bathroom, he's like grown, and it's like now it's current, you know, that's where, and that's where all the the chat about the apps and, you know, how to get a hookup, how not to, what to, and what not to do, all that stuff, that's when all that stuff comes in. So I guess I got you. Make it I can, you know, make it more clear of like what that timeline is. I picked up on that um in there, but I think that it, I mean, especially because again, you do have like this really like joyful vibe to this story right now. I think that it would be totally in line with the tone for you to superimpose the year on mm. this moment. Like, oh yeah. Those big bold like nineteen ninety nine kind of um moments mm -hmm. that would help us travel along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with everything she just said. Uh, I didn't get the time that I did kind of. I thought that that for a second I was like, was that him dancing with the different dudes? Was that where the time lapse is? Or the time jump? Well, the no, the yeah, if you can if you can scroll down a little bit in the script. Mm hmm. I can show you exactly where it happens. So here, right at the top of this page, keep going. Um, so uh, like where is um, just oh. Years uh, later, bow. I'm. I didn't. It. It's my yeah. fault. I don't. I, I sometimes don't read slug lines. No worries. It's whole, but, but like it's it, my fault. Above it says teenage Ricky in Wallace, and then it's like adult Ricky. So. Mm. So you it. mean that it, it was right in front of my face, and I just didn't read. I, it. I was tracking on that actually. <laughs> it, it was good. Um, I didn't have a lot of feedback other than just I'd like to see you comb through it. Um. There's some words that are not necessary and don't add value, like fucking and literally, mm. for example, are, are, are gratuitous to me. And it seems like this can be tightened up really concise and beautiful because I like your flow, the pace of it. And, uh, but pare it down by, by getting rid of some of those extra words that aren't necessary. Um, when you were fixed on on that one page for a while, I was reading some of it, and and reading it with the words and reading it without the words, and definitely pulling some of those words out will, will just make it have a little more, um, just be more better quality. Yeah, for me, um, and be a little tighter. Um, Look at that. It was a little hard for me being, uh, I mean, I'm not a, a gay man. And so I was really trying to be um, empathetic from, from that perspective, but it did remind me of my cousin. So, because uh, my cousin who lives in the Canary Islands um, is gay. And so I remember when he came out and everything and, and he's just this beautiful person. Um, but I didn't really see that. And I'm, and I wonder, is that a, is that an important sort of milestone in, in this kid's life where, I mean, where it comes out with his family or does it even matter? And, or sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. You have to address it. I, I, I don't know. That I'm just going to, um, that is actually interesting because you'd be surprised. Some families are, are way more accepting of that than you'd be than others. So coming out isn't always a um, traumatic okay. event. Sometimes it absolutely is. Sometimes for people, it absolutely is, but not for everyone. Um, okay. And I, for this, and for this, you know, for Ricky specifically, I, and I, well, I'm, I'm not even just for Ricky, but just for this story specifically, I, I really didn't want to focus any of that. You know, I didn't want to bring that. I thought that too. Or about the friendship that you were building. Yeah, yeah. yeah and know, I love that. I really wanted to like, you know, like you all are saying, it's, I'm glad that you all are really, that the joy is really apparent in this film because I, you know, I really want this to be like a romantic comedy. Of yeah. Like, you know, like sort of yeah. Like, I saw that. I definitely caught that. I caught that too. I think, and like I told you, I think this is the kind of story we need to see as yeah. people because when, when you're in this group, 
in other groups, it's always about the pain <laughs> of being that, and then you never get to see the joy. So yeah. I loved it. Pain yeah, comes. thank you. Love story, but <laughs> I mean, but that's okay. That's okay because it's not about. It's not everybody can relate to that type of pain. Right. Yeah. Of being dumped or not being with the love, you know. So I think it was great. Does anyone else have anything else they want to say? Um, I'm looking just to see if there's anything else that I hadn't gotten to. Okay. Uh, um, I also mentioned uh, that it might be helpful to go through the dialogue um, and the scene work with like a grammar comb, just mm. looking at it specifically just right. for grammar. Um, and one thing that um, helps me, because what I'll often do is even if I write something you know, especially when I'm in the flow, you know what I mean? And I'm like, da, 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 um, and I might skip words or different things like that. When I go back and read it, my mind's going to put that word in anyways, and I won't even see that it has an error. So right. something that helps for me is to read it out of order. Yeah. Um, and, and that kind of tricks your brain into looking more intentionally at what is on the page, as opposed to the flow that you have in your mind and you're just glossing over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Lena comes dropping gems, bro. Yes. Right. <laughs> Love it. Okay. And all my tricks. Um, hey. Hey, look. So <laughs> I guess after that, we're gonna move to the next piece. The next piece is going to be Snake Eyes. I mean, do you not want to do yours? I I just go last because you know, it's it's my thing. So I'm not. I'm trying to be like a host. You know what I mean? The host. Go. I go last. Yeah. Do you guys mind if we take a two minute break? Absolutely not. So we're gonna go over snake eyes. Uh my first note was I mean, I don't I don't think I took a note right away. It was a minute. Like I think immediately we comp it, we hop into the sit oh maybe, I forgot we were doing this thing. Let me do that. Boop boop. Oh hold on y'all. Oh screen share? Yeah. Oh yeah. I could do that. Okay. So the first thing, we hop into the beginning of it, and I think it starts off really well. Um, boom. Mm -hmm. So just from what he's wearing, we know what's up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. talking about if I was watching it, not so much so if I'm reading it. If I'm reading it, I get it from just from this part. Mm -hmm. um, but watching it, I see a guy in a, in a, in a freaking in a church in a tux, so I know what's all going on. But he's nervous. Mm -hmm. We already know what's going on. You don't have to explain it. Every time Liz has ever given me the note in the past about like condensing my action, I've always struggled with it. After reading this, I'm like, aha. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is like the epitome of that. Mm. Reading this, it is the epitome of that. Just boom, boom, boom. And I would have wrote, I would have written Dustin, tall, dark, blah, blah, blah. She's got a black tux on. Of, you know, I, I would have went, I would, my, my intro right here would have been like down to here. So I get it. Best friend, groomsman, great. I love how you get a sense of her personality right away. Like right mm -hmm. from the beginning, you get that she's that lovable, kind of quick-witted, you know, sarcastic best friend who is so down for her best friend. I also like the fact that it's a groomswoman. Mm -hmm. Because there's two of my friends whose weddings I was not allowed to be in specifically because they were women and I was men. So oh I, I know, and they're they're like my longtime best friends, but their husbands weren't cool with it. So oh, babe. that's so lame. I know, but I wanted, to, I wanted to ask real quick before we get too far down. Um, yeah. So this is a standalone short film. Yes. And um, I noticed that it's a fourth draft. So I wanted to, well, just because I saw that it was on there, I wanted to ask like what those previous iterations kind of look like, because I didn't want to maybe give notes on something. That you already had. had yeah, that you had. Oh, hey, Lena, this is why Lena is here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, no, so I definitely uh, was far too, um, it's funny that you say that about the action lines, because in the first couple drafts, they were much chunkier. Um, and it was, there was a lot more of him in the room getting ready and then she comes in and then they have a moment and then they transition to the dice. It, it was just, it was too drawn out. And so the, it just got kind of super, super truncated. Okay. Um, and I, and a lot of the jokes got cut out in that cause it used to be like, like joke heavy earlier on. Um, but 
because it was for a class that had to fit within the, the 10 page okay. limit. Uh, so that's why it got cut so short. But now that you're, you can do whatever you want, you could add yeah. those jokes back in, yeah? For sure, and I would like to. <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite one. Oh, you're back, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a good one. Um, I think personally, um, like I said, whatever your condensing did really worked. And the beautiful thing about mm. condensing it is, to you, it's like, okay, I need to condense it, but I want these jokes, right? So let me do yeah. my need first. And once I've addressed my need, which you have done, now you yeah. can, now you have your space for your wants. You know That's what I'm true. saying? You got a good four pages of space for your wants. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. and you have, and that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of jokes. So mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want. Um, for me, like I took like really crazy notes. I, I'd had one note because um, when they're in the priest's office, he says, I know what a gnat is, mm -hmm. but I don't know what a gnat is. So one of my biggest criticisms was that, and it's crazy because earlier I said that for the fallen piece, I liked that he trusted that his audience was um, was able to grasp things without being fed them. But here, the jokes that I didn't understand, especially because I could tell they were supposed to be funny, it made me feel like disconnected, only because yeah. I didn't get a lot of the references. So sure. I feel, but I'm not telling you to change them though, because I think it works for what you're trying to do. The only, so I would just maybe find a way with some of the jokes you're gonna add to not make me feel like I'm missing out on half of the comedy. On that, so, so. in that moment specifically, I had a note that might um, do what you're saying, Durier, because um, I felt like it was almost too coincidental that the priest was also like a D&D &D player. Um, right. Yeah, and so I wanted it to be like, let's blow it up for comedic effect if we're gonna go there. Um, and so in that moment, I was like, it's a little too coincidental. So if he added something right off the bat, like dwarf level 45, you know, like just to almost be like, I'm in this class. This is what we're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I feel like some of those, like, like dwarf is something that's a little more um, relatable to is. an outsider. Yeah, exactly. Than like the specifics in like the nitty gritty of how to play D and D. Absolutely. Because yeah. she's right. She's right. Because even if I don't play D and D, I know what a freaking dwarf is, yeah. and I get that D and D <laughs> is about that kind of stuff. So yeah. I don't get this other stuff but i i can laugh at that that's what i'm saying i don't i'm not telling you to take the jokes out just put mm -hmm. more in so that i don't feel like i'm missing out on the 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 base the the chunk of this piece mm -hmm. um but still D &D, i got it like that so <laughs> to see it, I'm like, yeah. that's why i think you should keep that stuff because there's going to be people like him who are like oh i love that that joke is there immediately right um i do have one more um thing that stuck out to me because it was so, it was such a good one however the priest confuses me in that he seems he seems very very quick-witted he is very knowledgeable and he's a geek mm -hmm. but he doesn't know the difference between superman and spider-man and aunt may and martha kent to me mm -hmm. to be so knowledgeable about all this nerd stuff he knows exactly but my favorite the pay there was a i'm conflicted because yeah. at the end, when he does that elephant never meant also that that was it. I was done after that. So I I wonder if we could have that kind of joke where he's absent on these things mm -hmm. that are so obvious. Just, <laughs> right. That were so obvious, like especially because he doesn't seem like he's out of off his rocker. Yeah. Unless he was like Christopher Lloyd in Back to the Future Page Master type energy. Th or, or like a Michael Scott, like impossibly, Michael Scott. like Who's Michael Scott, Scott from um, the, the office. office. Yeah. Steve Carell's the guy name. with the glasses who's tall and yeah, the, the guy who plays the boss where he's like, he's so self-confident and he's so wrong. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. what I was aiming for. Okay. <laughs> I feel like okay. some of that will come through in the performance, but I agree with Durier that it's like, I think you can... Um, highlight that even more than you know what i mean like you it's like yeah. you're kind of going there but let's like go there go, go there. there yeah 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 because he can be super well knowledge about weddings right mm -hmm. and, and being a priest but when it comes to his other stuff it's like i'm confident yeah i, I like the idea that you're confident and wrong 
Yeah. Yeah. Because the yeah, bride yeah, yeah. and groom yeah. clearly are picking up on the fact that he's not right. Right. But they're right. just, they don't care to tell him. I did also have that question. Why is it that they're trying to protect him from the fact that he's wrong? I mean, they don't want to be rude. It's, okay. it's kind of like an okay boomer moment. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, go there. I mean, you could even, you know, like, because I, I do see that she kind of keeps him from correcting him. Mm -hmm. But like, you, you know, hanging out with people who know everything about all this stuff, there is no holding them back. At all. Um, like, <laughs> At like all. now's my chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I feel like that maybe play in that moment there um, mm -hmm. with, with what you feel like the, the like highest comedy is, whether it's to be called out and for them to have like a little fun back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, 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 or yeah. maybe just under their breath, like correcting everything that he's saying. Um, mm -hmm. Then he may not. Oh, yes. on it, But it's yes. like a fun game that you can play with those characters. Yeah, that's yeah. That's word. yeah, yeah. The biggest thing for me is I wonder why you didn't go for the money shot and have them getting married. Like have like the moment where they're like doing their vows, being married by the priest and save the um moment of the priest in the office is like a stinger after that is it like right. a, a space thing like to get actually inside of the church yeah like production thing it was a it was a production thing yeah and it was it was a production thing and a budget thing um because we were basically given parameters that we had to write within um and we're only allowed to use essentially two locations and that's it um and then we were given a budget of like what was it? I think it was like 2,500, which is ridiculous. But so I, I right, and I was like, this is ridiculous. So I, I, I made the choice. To you were like, the wedding. <laughs> right. I was like, that's going to be too expensive. That's too big. That's too much. We're just going to cut it. Um, but no longer in that class. So that's a definite option. <laughs> I would, I would, I mean, like for me personally, because like anytime I'm watching anything and somebody's getting married, the, all I can think of is like, show me the dress. Like there are certain <laughs> things that I have to get paid like I, I need that reward and yeah. to me the fact that this is a, a a story about like their relationship and will they won't they since mm -hmm. they do i want that reward of seeing them getting married yeah 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 i love cool. the payoff too by the way i love the the priest in his office by himself all of that was so the well worth price? the price of admission i was like i was i was laughing through it already but after that i'm like oh my god i can't <laughs> Cool. Um, cool, cool. I wanted a little resolution with the groom's woman because I feel like she mm. was there and she seemed really important and then she was gone. That's that's so funny because she she was included a lot more and it, it it the original idea was that him setting up this whole thing to get them back on track was her idea. Um but that got cut the second or third draft because my teacher said that it it was too um Neat. what was the phrase huh neat it was too neat and too predictable and too cookie cutter is i think Wait, is what so they said you're saying like the groom's woman and the priest were like in cahoots to well, make I mean, sure that they went through with it because they're anxious people that are like is, prone uh, to flakiness yeah. i feel like this though i feel was like I, it depends as a writer it depends on what you're trying to send what message you're trying to send like are you trying to send <laughs> the message that this best friend of him, his, is such a good best friend that she knew this shit was going to happen, had some yep. trick dice already ready, yes. and went to the priest. But then if that's the choice, how much explaining does that need? Which is, I don't have the answer for that mm -hmm. question, but I know that's a question. Yeah. Or is the choice that this priest has been doing these freaking things so many times, and it's just, God, it's gotten so repetitive that he already knows to come prepared. And, right. and and well, it so seems like you know it, which of those two you want to tell. I right. I would just say I don't I don't really I don't think either one is the right or wrong answer personally. I mm -hmm. think it's just I, I, which I thought mean. if I may, I thought Dustin and Blair were like mm -hmm. you know, all dice for each other and it was gonna the dynamics, the story was gonna be about them. And, oh interesting. And not, yeah, and <laughs> and not the, the, the bride. And so and that it would like this fate driven you know oh, love affair with your best friend and they kind of spin off because i thought their 
dynamics between them were much stronger and kind of funny. Mm -hmm. um, they had their chemistry. Huh? They had chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, and then, you know, of course, then it went the other way and it was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is fine, like, too. But yeah. I, thought, I thought these two were going to be, you know, running off on some weird adventure or something. <laughs> Yeah, it felt it felt like she was going to play a really big role. Right. And so yeah. they didn't, it kind of felt a little unsatisfied. Yeah. I will say sure. this about Blair though. I will say this. I because I didn't I them saying it, I do agree. But in hindsight, because and I'm not I'm not negating what they're saying because what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But I will say as a testament to you, it still overall was satisfying. When I think about Blair, I'm not satisfied. Exactly. So, yes. so, but, and so I guess the hard thing about, and I'm thinking, of, I'm, I'm kind of internalizing onto some projects I'm working on myself. So in a moment like that, because it's really a want, you clearly know the story works well with Blair as it is. It, your needs mm -hmm. are met by the story. So now you're asking yourself, but I want Blair there. And. Mm -hmm. And how much of your length are you willing to sacrifice to make that happen? And then if you make that happen, does it seem too much like you're spoon feeding? Because I get like trying to wrap that up that the, that she knew that this was going to happen and got the dice ready and all that stuff might be a little like wordy and lengthy. I don't, but it don't depends. Think so? I think you could do it in action in, in one moment. I think you could literally have Blair palm a 20 to the priest after yeah. they say they're like, I do and yeah. kiss. And he hands her back the die, and we know right away. Oh, she gave the die to the priest, so he would. Continue. And that's why we have Lena here today, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so the the original ending was that um, she they it, it goes through the same as it does, and then when they leave, there's like two seconds, and then Blair comes in and goes, "Hey, did it work?" And he's like, "Yes," and then gives her back the die, right. and then she leaves, and then they go into the wedding. That's how it originally was, but it got shot down so quick is why it changed. But um, that's a preference thing. I personally think that's a preference thing because to me, you could even do that without her saying anything. She could just pop right. in because the, yeah. the couple could leave smiling and happy and she sees them leaving, hands mm -hmm. them the 20, like Lena said. But I think it is a preference thing. Well, um, you gotta give me my kiss. You gotta give me my, my like wedding kiss. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's it. so true. That's you, could get a, you, could, you could cheat. You could cheat a church chapel in a priest's office. For sure. What I was going to say is oh, this, though. Yeah. You have two rooms, right? <laughs> Thinking back to the Sean thing that I was telling you about, Liz. Um, so you have two different locales, but they're both the office-type places in the church. Yeah. So that can be the same location. Different wall. <laughs> different different yeah. walls. Like, put a desk up against one wall and then and just shoot it like that. I'm for real, because then you no, get... No, I'm laughing because you're right. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then your chapel could be your other location. So... That's and so I, but I like the way that you're thinking about it. I, I like learning as a screenwriter what I need to be thinking about production-wise because I know a lot of it I don't need to be telling. I don't need to be instructing the people how to do. But there's certain mm -hmm. stuff like this where you're like, but if it's this many locations, it's cheaper. But if I don't add this special effect, it's cheaper. So I like that, especially for the people who hopefully end up watching this, that that's in the, in the brain when you're doing screenwriting. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a play, you definitely need to consider yeah. your budget. Well, like, I mean, like, I, I had to go through, just before I went on maternity leave, I had to go through a script I wrote and take it down from, like, 15 locations down to 10. <sighs> and so doing that work where you're trying to use double duty on a, on a um, location and mm -hmm. move scenes into different places and try to satisfy mm -hmm. the story beats within, it's an excellent exercise because 100% it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you play to somebody and they're going to be like, this is great. We need to like cut like half of the expenses. And that's either going to be in like cutting characters completely out. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay like the actors or it's going to be cutting locations so you can save on costs and travel. Like, um, so it's always really good to just kind of play in that world in there and be like, how would I do this if I only had one location? How would I do this if I had three? It's true. That's so true. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm note finished. Does anyone else have anything to say? Good. Schnick eyes. Oh, Thanks, God, here we go. All right, you're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> you ready? Um,
I, I'm never ready to get. Oh, now, listen, I will tell you, ready. No, that my grammar is. Let me tell you, I wrote this by hand. I transferred it to the computer, and then I haven't touched it. So I was going to say, I felt like grammar, there were points where it was like written fast, and I was yes, like, where so, those kinds of type in is speed. Forgive me for that. Yes, forgive me for that. <laughs> because and I thought. I didn't have time. I was like, look, either I'm just going to send it to them so they can read it or I'm going to go over it. And if that happens, they're not going to read it. So, so, um, so, where are, so screen share. All righty. Here we are. And this is my piece. Let me pull up my notes and get ready to type. All right. So have at it. And it, let me know if you want to scroll to something. Um, okay. We'll go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. <laughs> I had some structural <laughs> feedback. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So, <clears throat> aside from, well, story structure, Kai, I really like that you don't give away his gender mm -hmm. right away because you, you, you foreshadow really nice in, in here and, and I'm thinking, What's his gender? Is he gay or is he a she or what's going on here? So I kind of I kind of like that. It, it drops some curiosity for me. But, but where I struggled was, you know, it seemed like they they ran and um, uh, Luca and uh, Tanya were were like going to save Kai, right? And but then Kai goes from being in this uh, sort of detrimental state and, and asleep or drugged or hurt or whatever the case is to being like the hero to catch Tanya falling out the window. But the other Ren and Luca were became super passive. And that that confused me because they were the ones that just saved Kai. But yet. Now they became passive, and Kai is like front and center is, you know, gonna gonna catch Tanya. Is uh, that, that, that confused me? Um, in that, um, that Kai saved Luca, and then Kai yeah, so yeah, Kai is not oh, yeah. Luca is the one at the beginning who is like dying. Kai is Luca. Oh Luke. God, and I'm so sorry. It's I, okay. I read, I read through this, and and I did not. I wasn't. Con I didn't connect it that way, and, and that. Um, so I, I beg your pardon. It's well, no, okay. that kind of sets up one of one of my first notes, um, which is that I had a hard time initially keeping track of who was who and what they could do um, and who they were to each other. And mm -hmm. I think that you have the perfect opportunity within this first chapter. Um, I I love, by the way, that it seems as though each chapter is going to bounce to a different point of view. That makes me think of Game of Thrones. Um, the way each chapter is like a different protagonist, um, yes. which is nice. And on in, in stories where you have a really big kind of ensemble group and there is no necessarily hierarchy, I think that that's a really smart move. Um, and I love that you open up with so much action and so much violence here. It's similar to that um, story that we read earlier um, where it hooks you right off the bat because you're like, oh shit, how did they get to this point? But then I'm like, how did they get to this point? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> like, know. yeah, I want to know like yeah. what the, I want to know more about the club and like why they were there and, and, yeah. and what they did to get to now. And I feel yeah. like you could easily do um, a flashback and use that flashback as your opportunity um, to have Kai introduce us to his crew Ooh, and tell okay. us a little bit about all of these people and, and what they're capable of. Um, and we kind of get to see how the night went wrong and we ended so, up with Luca nearly dying. So you're yeah. saying, yeah. Okay, so let me, I'm just speaking out loud, thinking out loud. So yeah. I, because I love the action at the beginning too, because that's one thing, but I have gotten that note before. So I'm thinking just, I've never got the flashback idea when Kai goes Basically, his magic um, overwhelms him when that that spell specifically. Rains so him. when he kind of falls out, then I could actually do the flashback right there. That'd be a perfect moment. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. almost yeah. as though that's his thought as he's losing consciousness, where it's like mm -hmm. he's thinking about how they got to this point. 
Cause we do yeah. that, you know, when you're like, when the shit finally hits the fan, you're kind of sitting there being like, how the hell? How did I get here? Yeah. yeah. Six months um, happened in a flash. Yeah. Okay. And then we get okay. right back into that moment at whatever point you feel like is the best like jump. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's actually cause um, right, transferring it to computer. I realized that I don't think this chapter is long enough. So mm -hmm. that would actually help me make it longer too. Okay. Yeah. Who, who's your audience on this? My audience is people like me who are like, um, I guess, millennials. Millennials. Okay. That's my audience. So okay. basically adults. I'm pretty sure like older teens would read this too. Uh, okay. Even though the characters are teenagers, they're not like your average teenager because most of them grew up in like without their parents in foster care mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So the, the language is really... <laughs> I write them like teenagers actually talk. Um, so the language is heavy. Um, there's, it's not gonna be gratuitous, but clearly like sexuality is a thing. I, I'd like to know some of that back backstory on, on these characters where they came from. How is it that they, are they human? You know? <laughs> only, only look, but did you, if you read, did you read chapter two? Yeah, I did, did, but maybe I, I missed it. About super chapter two is Ren's, perspective right and so yeah 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 Ren, Ren tells today. everybody yeah. yeah in the second in the second chapter Ren kind of goes through everybody's story of how they ended up without their parents um, yeah okay. Luca's the only one that's human okay I, yeah, I, I got I got some tidbits in there going through yeah like you said how Ren was basically going through the crew um mm -hmm. But I would say as you continue on with this story, um, like dig in even deeper on some of that. I think there's, a, you know, you don't want to almost like um, use up the the background info moment right then, you know, where it's like, they're so, right. his parents are dead and he's fine with it. Da, 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 da. And, then, <laughs> and then, so then when you get to dig into that more, you want to explore that. And so like- So can I ask you a so question? Like, I, I agree. Because it it feels like there's there's a whole other chapter before you get into these chapters that are so character focused one after the other. I feel like there's there's an arc of the story that could be put out there a little better with the, like maybe chapter one is actually or prologue uh, a, a prologue something to give context um, and that I think would help me to identify and understand the direction that this is going. Um, it, I, I don't mind the technique, um, you know, where chapter one is clearly through Kai's okay. perspective and then two goes to Ren. Um, but if, if that's gonna be the, the, the mode, then yeah, prologue and, and you know, like what you were saying, you know, maybe there's room to flush chapter one out even further. Don't be afraid to lay it all out there and, 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 and yeah, really that's what I was going to ask. Um, so when Lena said, um, about the second chapter, I'm, I'm confused. Are you saying that you felt like I gave too much away in the chapter with Ren or that I didn't give enough? One or the other is happening, right? And it's almost like, um, I think that if you're not going to then have time to explore it more fully, um, you might be better served to just maybe touch on it and move on. But it almost felt as though you were like checking those boxes where you're kind of giving us a little bit of background info on each character. And I felt like it might be better served to dig in a little deeper. Um, oh, Ben. Well, Okay, this is where I, I struggle because like anything I write that's supernatural, I've already created like a whole world for it. So this is, this I, I thought was the bare minimum that I could give to make us understand the circumstances for these people mm -hmm. because everything, everything, the chapters, we find out the consequences of what happened in the house. Mm -hmm. So really what happened in the house is the inciting incident. So, ah, I see. Okay. And so everything after that is like, oh, like basically this chapter with Ren is like, we think we just got away scot-free from the situation when actually now the whole magical world is going to fall on top of us. 
I guess I'm feeling like maybe um, instead of Ren having the responsibility of, of um, glossing through each character's kind of background, maybe it does focus in more on Ren and like we get to explore more about um, like where he is in the picture of this like super group. Um, and that could be a fun way to go through the chapters where each person that we go into, we learn a lot about them. Um, but also I would, ex I mean, this is like, you could also just free write for a while um, and, and see where those characters take you in their own chapters and then set up the structure. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be super linear right now. Um, yeah. Like you could just explore like what the story chunks are that you want to tell, flesh those out, and then see what you've got um, and, and convalesce it together into a story after that. Like there's no right or wrong way um, to explore, like, especially something that's very fantasy driven. You know, this made me think of Hunger Games. Um, it made me mm -hmm. think of like the darker Harry Potter novels, uh, some of the Twilight books. Uh, so, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know. I almost feel as though like it's so fresh. Um, I would just keep writing it <laughs> before you get too nitty gritty on like the rules of how you want to present it. So I, I, I think, so I think I, I had a note to, to Lena's point. I had a note um, on the narrative for with chapter two. I agree. I don't really want Ren to be the one telling me about everybody. I, I want Ren I want to learn about Ren <laughs> in the chapter. It's the Ren chapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I guess that was a choice because Ren's role in all of this right now is that he is, um, he's the one in the group that is the observer for the most part. Mm. Well, you could he's, set that up then. He's, you know? he's the one in the yeah. group that like everybody else is all like, and he's just that guy who's always just like, like, are we going to fight these people or are we going to? go have a beer because you know I, and so I really wanted to get that that was what I was trying to push across in that chapter that he's not so much he's not so bothered by all of this because he's just very accepting of them as they are because he's never had siblings so that's how he looks at them so I want that to come across go ahead you should say all of that you know? yeah like you could totally have Ren say all of that where it's like I like to observe. I like to, you know, like I remember what people tell me. I, I, I am the keeper of all of these backstories. Um, I've never had siblings, so this is my family. So these are all my extended family experiences. Like um, you can, you can go, I think you can be more overt with what you want us to know about him. And to kind of piggyback off that, like I agree with what Lena was saying before. I think in, in trying to be brief and trying to be concise, uh, it it gave us like more of of an outline of what you're doing more so than like the full painting, if that makes sense. And so you're I think telling me, Liz, half the time you tell me to be short winded, and now no, 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 I'm no. just being. <laughs> 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 I know, I know. I know. Scripts <laughs> versus novels. So I know, I know. I'm just being. What I'm saying is, is that when because you have all of these amazing thoughts and and visuals of like what you want to do, your first draft vomit all of that get it all yeah, out yeah, 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 yeah. And, and just put it on and then go back and then try to make it brief once it's all out because i feel like you're you're so awesomely creative that mm -hmm. by trying to edit yourself while doing your first draft you're doing yourself a disservice ah uh, that's that's fair that's fair uh, that's, that's fair. what i'm saying <laughs> that's fair is this, is this our world oh sorry i talked right over that what'd you say <laughs> oh, I was just commiserating with the comment. I I learned that, you know, as far as vomiting it all out and then yeah, just get through it. Need to work through, yeah. Uh, you were asking a question, Lena. Yeah, I was asking um, about the world itself. Is this a world that is our world as it is now, and it's kind of like a yes. secret world that coexists, or is it overt yes. alternate reality? Yes, please. Uh, it is. It's it's our world. And we're discovering a world that exists alongside our world. Cool. Um, that's generally what I do. I have I have one story that's a wholly different world because I like like my favorite thing in these genres is like finding out that stuff that we know about well, how it's really that way and what really these, these legends talk about. 
So um, it is our world. Um, but, and that's why I say like the consequences of what happened in that house are gonna push the two worlds together. So I'm getting, I'm spoiling. But anyway, like I get what you're saying. Um, Cause you, I, I think, go ahead. Uh, have you read any of the Suki Stackhouse novels, the True Blood series? No, but I've seen all the True Blood episodes, but I haven't seen the, I haven't read the novels. The books are, I mean, I, ha I actually haven't watched the show, but the books are addictive. They're super readable. <laughs> Um, and they paint a really specific world. And there's something about when you mentioned Savannah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, we're yeah. in the South. And there's a there's feeling. Some, yeah, there's a certain feeling. There's a certain kind of like, you can play with that, I think. Um, and that might help us get our footing um, in a really creative way earlier on. Kind of similar, um, you know, with Darren's piece in The Fall and how I, I think it could be fun to play with the dichotomy of like, um, this really uh, ethereal, fanciful kind of um, alternate dimensions that he's jumping through and then like the super grounding, realistic thing of like a therapist with a pen. I feel like for yours, it would be the fun of this fantasy land with all these supernatural beings juxtaposed with like the like old South and like and what that backdrop lends itself for when it comes to um, outsiders. That makes sense. That's great that's it does it does um i i think it's also i hear hearing y'all say the thing about vomiting i wasn't just vomiting i actually was trying to and i i get what you're saying now because i know where the story is going i know the rules and all that stuff but the actual structure of the book i'm because honestly it it wasn't originally when i started writing supposed to be every other chapter was a different character but i found that it was better this way because i really wanted us the reader to really fall in love with each of these characters individually an ensemble yes um because the four of them they really are an ensemble um and you know there's some political stuff i'm trying to say about tanya being the strongest one in the group even though she's the only female and she's black mm. um i i really want to create like a, a world for like kids not kids for for like geeks to like yeah. really fan out about this kind of stuff um so that was my goal at first. And I felt like that was the best. So people could have their own like, oh, this one's my favorite. This one's my favorite. This one's my favorite. Um, but like, it was a second thought. It originally, it was going to be all from Kai's perspective. So I, 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 I just wanted to say, you know, what you were just talking about is my impression was this was a story that could be like this epic narrative for all ages and creating this Harry Potter vast world of magic that's right in front of us and coexisting. Yeah. So drop some of the profanity. Oh, yeah. He does, he does not like cursing. I love a good cursing. If I get it, though. It I get it, though. YA shell, that, that's yeah. why I asked you who's, who's your audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Which, is, which, is, which is why, I mean, I, I don't know, like, logistics. My, my character in Fallen, that... Yeah, fuck it, man. I mean, they're gonna <laughs> language and be because that fits their personality. And I'm, I don't, I, I mean, I won't even let my nephew probably read it because <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, it's dark. But this struck me as not being in that in that market. It's 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 Harry Potter market to me, right. and so. That's a struggle I struggle it's with. Such a huge, I really like this a lot because as a writer, the way I write, I'm like, I just start globbing on to all these chunks and these characters. And in my mind, as I'm looking at it, you know, Kai, I've, I've got this whole other side story that's happening in my mind as I'm reading it, you know, kind of filling in gaps of my own. And, and I get really excited because it's, the opportunities are, are vast and um but like to lena's point you know i want to know more about the world too and see some of that contrast just like liz was telling me bring that out earlier in the story and um and be okay with it but anyway sorry i i digressed and kind of jumped in there. no i get what you're saying um it is about it's not just about the writing it's also about marketability and and I when I was writing it at first in Kai's chapter, I really tried to stay away from the cursing. But as I was writing Ren, I was like, Ren is a, he's a cursor. And so what I'll do is, well, I think I'll just have to edit it after I write it. Go back and and 
Well, I don't, because I get what you're saying. Like, it, it doesn't make sense for to, I'm just that one character cursing this much. Is he curses a lot? I know I've thought of that before too. I just didn't care right now because really, I just want to get the characters on the page to kind of understand who they are individually. And I'm not personally offended by it, mind you. I'm really right. not. It just, it's more about yeah. continuity. Yeah. And I think you could probably pick, um, like you could think of Ren's language as like, what is cursing to him? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to, you don't have to kind of like eliminate that quality of that character where, you know, they might have an offensive language, but like, what are Ren's curse words? You know? Well, and maybe tie that to personal principles that he has in, in his relationship to one, to be a steward or a role model to, because, you know, they're like, you know, super wizards or whatever. And, and maybe he's got some inner dialogue and some scruples around representation because they want to be accepted and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So, yeah, I know there's a balance. It's like taking some of the big curse words off the table, you know, like playing by the same rules as like, um, like television does, you know, where like you can say shit, but you can't say fuck. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> It's kind of creating like whatever, like where you will go and where you won't go um, mm -hmm. and keeping it in that same kind of zone where it is more palatable to like a wider audience, especially younger audience. Because this does feel like it has potential to be like really solid YA content. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any more? Mm -hmm. Writing. Uh oh, include page numbers. Ha ha. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. It's formatting wise. I literally copy and pasted this into this document the day I sent it to y'all. <laughs> well, we already talked about that. Yeah, like like you wrote it so so quickly. Yeah, I did. Um, but I hear you though, and I if, if you didn't say that, I definitely wouldn't have done it. <laughs> the the spacing um would be spacing. nice easier to read. My eyes are horrible and that, that made it oh, a challenge. Yeah. And yeah. and telling like dialogue from different things like like yeah look, look at the books that you like the most and look at how they format their dialogue and what makes them super readable to you and maybe mimic that because mm -hmm. um, there are different ways to do it you know there there are standards but there's also variations so like mm -hmm. whatever visually is clearest to you because like looking at this page that you have it on right now it's kind of hard to tell when yes. we're going in and out of dialogue because of the I see it. Mm -hmm. Like right here. Exactly. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. And you could maybe like, you know, enter above and beyond that uh, piece of dialogue to draw it out a little more. Um, so that way our eyes can kind of move through it. I don't think I had any other notes um, mm -hmm. on there. Um, did I have any questions? No, I mean, my favorite chapter, I, I think for me mostly right now is um, chapter length because Tanya's chapter is super long. But it's long because her chapter has like a lot of action in it. Um, so, and so I didn't want to end the chapter, but I might have to. So as far as chapter lengths, is that something that you all feel like is a really big, um, I guess I'm asking Darren more, but do you feel like chapter length is something that's important? to be a certain length to to accomp like to be to qualify as a chapter it needs to be blank amount of pages for me personally uh, the reader i just like my chapters to be kind of the same size throughout okay mm -hmm. just so Depends. like i know like when i'm reading i'm like oh i'm gonna start a new chapter it's gonna maybe take me this long to read through it but that's mm -hmm. just the total like consumer personal preference so darren probably has a stronger point of view from like the uh, writer creative side? Well, it depends on the arc of the story and transitions. I'll use real short, like two, three page chapters if I'm making a significant, you know, transition and or it's almost like an exclamation point in a sentence, you know? So it just, it just depends. Um, I tend to pay close attention to word count um, and by chapter, um, because it definitely sets a pace. Set by chapter, like by. Yes, 
you know, like just by, by chapter, I'm looking at, at word count by chapter because, I mean, you, you can chart it. It, it definitely um, will, will affect the, the pace and, and the flow of the story. And, um, but again, it depends on what the arc is. And the, I mean, there's so many variables, so I don't know that there's like a hard and fast rule or, or, you know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying yeah. that, I mean, there's not a hard and fast rule, but there's a, um, not unspoken, but kind of sort of like this, 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 um, unspoken idea of how long a chapter should or shouldn't be. Well, the story, the story will dictate it. Ultimately, I guess is what I'm trying to say, and be be sensitive and pay attention to that. The story should start to define those th those kind of elements, and okay, um, and, and let the characters in the story just kind of take over. Mm -hmm. and, and but you got to pay attention to it and manage it. Yes, you know, um, and then reading it out loud um, as, as you. You know, because like I like with Ballin, that that's been well, that's been rewritten and reworked probably half a dozen times. Okay, you know? and it it just has been goes through a, a cheese grinder. <laughs> so, but hey. I think you've got a really excellent platform here that you're creating for your world. Thank you. I mean, I definitely take it as a huge compliment that y'all feel like this is like that it has the appeal of YA. Cause that's, I definitely want it to be something like that. And that's why I created the world I, I created because this story has a beginning, middle and end, but the world itself could have a lot of different. Yeah, so um, that's definitely what I wanted to create. Franchise series where it's like, right. you know, yeah. I just know how, I, look, I'm, I love geeks and I just know how supportive we are as a, brand, as a group of people. And I just love creating stuff for us to have and just relate about and talk shit about and you know debate who's who's got the I love that stuff and so that's what I really try to create so I'm glad that y'all see that I think these notes are great a lot of it a lot of it I knew I was going to get but a lot of it is definitely going to help especially with the ideas behind um I don't know how to word it but taking the structure and and, and using it to introduce us to the world a little bit more slowly to where the readers can consume it logically is that Kind of sort of like this idea that um, instead of just introducing it and spitting it out, I can actually draw it out and paint a, better, a bigger picture. I wouldn't think about it as logic. I would just think about it as like l allowing yourself the space for us to enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Um, like I wouldn't think too much about like how long is this chapter so far or um, things like that. Like just play in that sandbox for a while. Mm -hmm. Got you. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Um, your feedback was so great. Lena didn't even submit, and and you had such positive, <laughs> constructive <laughs> words. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is because you know you showed up here and you were such an integral part of the process, and <laughs> and without having taken necessarily critique for your own work. So I really appreciate you being here. Is what I'm saying. Oh, thanks. You know, you'll see me in the group every day. I hope you guys have a great time. To everybody who's going to be watching this recording, will be up later today. Um, you're right. We're recording. Oh God, I hope I didn't say anything stupid. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, I don't think we did. Just thinking about that forever and ever. <laughs> no. Um, yes, if you want to be featured on Writer, the, I'm sorry. If you want to be featured during Wine and Reads, just contact one of the admins, which can be me and Liz or Rakia. Or if you want to be on our next Writers Roundtable, make sure you submit. Um, 10 pages or less um, of any work that you're in the progress of creating. Darren's we love like, you guys. Yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> right, right. Darren's like, uh, uh, uh. but yeah, but he's, he's different because he's a continuing the same piece. All right. You guys have a great day. Have a good night. Be safe. Cheers. Bye. Bye.